back uh, in the last uh, lecture we discussed something about uh, the basic building blocks of predicate logic where we introduced various things such as what do you mean by a predicate, what do you mean by a term, what do you mean by a functional symbol etc and all. So all these things which we have discussed in the last class. So in this class uh, another major building block of uh, predicate logic apart from predicates etc terms uh, relational symbols etc and all the quantifier. So in fact predicate logics are also called as quantificational logic or it is also called as another name for this one is the first order logics. So in this class what we will be doing is uh, we will be discussing something about what we mean by quantifier uh, why we need these quantifiers and then uh, we talk about uh, uh, some of the important laws of this uh, quantifiers and then we will discuss uh, some other uh, important things which come under the category of syntax the syntax of predicate logic. So basically we are uh, in the syntax of predicate logic basically we are discussing about some of the building blocks of predicate logic. So to let us start with uh, what we mean by a quantifier. So there are two quantifiers that we use in the predicate logic the first one is called as a universal quantifier it is represented as for all x uh, the symbol for this one uh, is written in this way for all x it is read as uh, for all x so it claims that the formula that follows is true for all values of x for example if you say all men are mortal uh, mortality is attributed to all the human beings so that mortality is attributed to all the human beings so whatever follows after the quantifier uh, uh, is uh, that formula is going to claim that we are going to claim in that formula that that follows uh, what follows after the quantifier is true for all values of x for example if you say all human beings are happy uh, this is simply represented as uh, this thing for all x uh, h stands for the human being and x stands for uh, any individual human being and then we have some kind of uh, uh, domain so that is universe of discourse we usually call it as UD means universe of discourse which usually consists of human beings or people and then this stands for a quantifier and this stands for usually predicate. So being mortal uh, uh, being happy is considered to be the predicate and that is attributed to a one single uh, variable x and if that happens for all the uh, human beings then uh, we represent it in this way for all x uh, h x. So another quantifier that we will be uh, using uh, uh, every uh, very often frequently uh, is the existential quantifier. So it is represented as there exists an x it claims that the formula that follows after this quantifier. Uh, is true for at least one value of x so that means suppose if you say that uh, at least one swan is considered to be uh, usually swans are white in uh, color suppose if you find if you figure out uh, figure it out in such a way that you figure it out in a way that the swan that you looked at is considered to be black so you want to say represent that particular kind of thing you usually represent it in terms of there exists some x such that that particular x is considered to be a swan which is considered to be black. So now assuming that the universe consists of uh, real numbers so depending upon what you take into consideration uh, uh, the formulas uh, uh, represented by quantifier uh, changes in all the formula is going to be true sometimes the same formula is going to be false some other occasion. For example if you consider the universe of discourse as real numbers uh, then uh, if suppose if you want to represent this particular kind of sentence. Uh, for all x, x multiplied by 0 uh, is equal to 0 any number any real number x which is multiplied by 0 it obviously will give you 0. So x into 0 is equal to 0 it happens for all x whatever x that you are going to take into consideration which falls within the domain of real numbers the property that uh, x into 0 is equal to 0 holds for all x and all. So that is the reason why we wrote it in this way for all x, x multiplied by 0 is equal to 0. So this is one way of representing this particular kind of thing again uh, if you 
consider the same universe of discourse as uh, real numbers and then the other, uh, other thing which you can represent it in this one is for, every, for all x there exists some y that means at least one y such that x multiplied by y is equivalent to 1. So here we have used uh, two quantifiers the first one is considered to be the universal quantifier the second one is the existential quantifier I am just stating that you know uh, these are the some of the things which you commonly come across uh, I mean uh, later we will be talking about the translation part where we will be talking about how to translate the sentences appropriately into the language of predicate logic little bit later. So right now uh, there are uh, two quantifiers that we need to study uh, in detail because predicate logics are called as quantificational logics. So, so usually we represent it in this particular kind of thing uh, suppose if you want to represent universal quantifier it is considered to be like this for example if we have this particular kind of thing Ax implies Bx let us say all human beings are mortal where A is represented as human beings and B is represented as mortal. So now let us consider that there are only two individual human beings it makes sense to talk about simple formulas in this way for example this can be written as A A implies B A where X is, rep X is replaced by A and A B implies B B. So if there are only two uh, this is universe of discourse is considered to be people all people are human beings in that we have taken into consideration only two human beings A and B let us say Aristotle and Socrates. So if you want to represent this particular kind of thing because there are only two people in this universe I mean uh, the domain so we can represent this uh, this formula simply as this one but when the number increases and all C D E F etc and all there is no way in which you can uh, represent it in, in this particular kind of form because this uh, string will uh, uh, string will go on and on and on. So in order to represent this particular kind of thing if this property is going to be true for all x then we require this particular kind of universal quantifier. So that means here another thing which you need to note is is that if any one of this thing is false then the whole uh, this particular kind of formula is going to be automatically false that is uh, as good as saying this particular kind of thing suppose if you want to say that all crows are black that means you represented it like this you found a, a crow white uh, black crow A if that is a crow A is a crow then A has to be black in the same way you found another crow you are naming it as B B is considered to be uh, a crow and B has to be black like that it goes on and on and on suppose if you find an instance where for example A uh, is false and all. so in the third instance you found a white crow then you cannot say that for all x if x is A then x has to be black and all because that particular kind of thing is false even if one instance is false you cannot represent it in this particular kind of way usually uh, mainly law statements in science are usually represented as universal generalizations but you need to note that all universal generalizations have its own has its own exceptions so uh, so this is the way in which you represent the universal quantifiers whereas existential quantifiers uh, same thing ax and bx so this is for example if you have again uh, two we are taking into consideration two people from this universe of uh, discourse that is n number of people are there out of that we have selected only two that is assume that there are only two human beings existing in this uh, world uh, for example then you represent this formula as uh, uh, represent this formula in this way a a and b a r a a a b and b b so here it is a conjunction here it is a disjunction that means at least at least one of the things should satisfy this particular kind of thing then this formula is going to be true 
So later when we talk about semantics of predicate logic we will be discussing in detail how to interpret these particular kind of formulas and all but at this moment uh, it is like this that for example if you want to represent uh, for all x uh, uh, some p x then it is usually a conjunction of all these things uh, i goes to 1 to n etc p i. So that means p1, p2, p3, etc., and all each p is considered to be a formula. Uh, if you want to represent uh, this thing, uh, there exists some x p x. It is considered to be a disjunction. Now, i one goes to n or infinity also, then p i etc. So it, the, each and every formula will be like this. This is some x x one, x two, x three, etc. So even if at least one of these formulas is true, then that is going to universal existential quantifier uh, is going to hold that means it is going to be true. So these are the two quantifiers that we come across uh, and these two quantifiers are interrelated to each other in this particular kind of way. So these are considered to be a dual the duals so for example for all x p x can be represented in this particular kind of by definition it can be written in this sense. So universal quantifier can be defined in terms of existential quantifier in this particular kind of way. So it says that for all x p x means there does not exist some x such that it is not p x. So that is what it says and then in the same way there exists some x p x by definition it is same as not for all x not p x. So this is what uh, we have and then suppose if you negate this particular kind of uh, thing universal quantifier I mean it is, it is not the case that for all x p x means uh, you need to push this negation inside and then negation of uh, universal quantifier will become existential quantifier and you need to push this negation inside so that means it becomes not p x and then negation of x p x that means if you negate the existential quantifier for example this, this stands for uh, x is happy or something like that. So there exists some x such that x is happy or there exists some s van which is considered to be black in color if you negate that one this is going to be a universal quantifier for all x and this you push it inside and then it will become p x. So this says that for all x for all birds etc and all. Uh, there exists at least uh, uh, one swan which is not considered to be white that means it has to be black in color so that is what it says. So this is a relation between universal quantifier and the existential quantifier it always exists in duals. So existential quantifier can be defined in terms of universal quantifier in this way in the same way suppose if you negate this uh, universal quantifier you can talk about this thing in terms of existential quantifier negation of existential quantifier you have universal quantifier. So let us talk about uh, something uh, in detail for example if you take the domain of discourse as natural numbers so in the uh, you have to note that in the predicate logic everything makes sense only with respect to some kind of domain if the domain is not there it does not make any sense to talk about any formula and all because something happens uh, something which is true in some kind of. Uh, domain that you are taking into consideration may be false in some other kind of thing. Uh, suppose if you take a, uh, if you take into consideration real numbers and then you talk about some kind of formula which might hold and the same kind of formula might be false in, in terms of in case of uh, uh, some other numbers such as complex numbers etc. So domain is considered to be the most important thing which we will talk about it when we discuss uh, the semantics of predicate logic in greater detail uh, in the next few classes. So now uh, if we consider a domain of discourse is considered to be natural numbers like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 etc and all and 0 is not there if you add 0 to it it will become whole numbers. So another we have a predicate phi uh, which relates x and y uh, there is some kind of relationship between x and y and that relation is defined as uh, defined in this way x is less than y so then we are taking into consideration natural numbers and then we have a function 
f x y which is considered to be a binary function uh, which is defined in this way x plus y plus is considered to be a binary function because it connects x and y multiplication plus uh, divided by etc are all binary functions in arithmetic and a b c's are considered to be the constants uh, which stands for some kind of numbers 0 1 2 etc so now uh, we can talk about uh, one particular kind of formula there exists some x phi x y in the context of natural numbers so this is considered to be an unary predicate uh, which which essentially says that there exists some kind of uh, actually it should be there exists some y phi x y which says that which says of y that there is a natural number less than uh, that particular kind of thing x where usually we consider it as since you are considering natural numbers definitely y is not equivalent to 0. So it might uh, it might hold uh, as long as you do not take into consideration y is equal to 0. So there is always uh, a number which is less than uh, suppose if you take uh, x as 1 and y as 2 and you have a, you have a situation where it satisfies this particular kind of formula there exists some x phi x phi holds in this particular kind of domain the domain of natural numbers provided y is not equivalent to 0 and the second one let us consider another example where for all x there exists some y and a predicate x y uh, which is stating that for any natural number x that means for all x means for any natural number whatever number that you are taking into consideration so that number has to be a natural number x there is always uh, there is there exists some y it is not saying that for all y there exists some kind of y that means at least one particular kind of y there is also a natural number y which is greater than x so you take uh, two numbers in a domain and all pick up two domain uh, two numbers from a domain so then uh, you take any such kind of uh, natural number for all x there is always a kind of uh, natural number y which is greater than x for example if you take two into consideration there is always another number which is greater than 2 that is 3 might be 3 is greater than 2 the same way if you fix 3 then there is always another number which is greater than that one so this holds for the natural numbers but if you take into consideration uh, the real numbers that means all the uh, uh, irrational rational all these numbers and all then it may not hold the same kind of formula may work in some kind of domain it might be false in another domain so these are some of the equivalences between uh, this quantifiers uh, some of the things which I have already explained on the board and all which connects uh, this uh, equivalence relations connects universal quantifier with the existential quantifiers. So now so far we have discussed in, a, in a, some kind of detail about the quantifiers uh, uh, if you do not have this quantifiers and then there is no way in which you can express uh, this particular kind of thing you will be recursively writing all the formulas without any end for example if you want to represent all crows are black then you will be writing uh, there are uh, suppose in the domain there are 10,000 crows and all which represent which is represented by a b c etc and all a1 b1 b2 etc and all then if you start writing about uh, if you start representing that particular kind of formula then uh, suppose there are 10,000 birds that you are taking into consideration then your string your well formed formula will have uh, 10,000 sub formulas and all which is very difficult for us to manage so for that reason you require this particular kind of quantifiers. Uh, another important thing which you need to note is this that in the case of a universal quantifier there is a difference between this particular kind of thing for example if you represent this particular thing ax implies bx for example in this one ax is considered to be empty that means this is false or empty or it is false and all for example you can talk about uh, uh, this particular kind of thing that all unicorns are uh, wise so this particular kind of thing you can express it in terms of quantify that might hold in your uh, that might be true or might be false also so uh, depending upon what values uh, how you interpret this thing so uh, suppose uh, this particular kind of thing ax is false then irrespective of your consequent bx this whole formula is going to be true 
and hence this formula holds in all. So although uh, this formula can be true even without the existence of the unicorns in the actual world. So you can still talk about uh, a universal quantificational formula uh, uh, without uh, talking about whether or not they exist in the world Ax can be false Ax if Ax can is false then this whole formula is automatically going to be true and all but in the case of uh, existential quantifier suppose if you say that unicorns are uh, uh, no, for example if you say that all unicorns are R wise because unicorns are does not exist and all. So from this suppose if you infer that uh, some unicorns are, are intelligent wise so now this has no problem and all as such because this this, uh, this statement can still be true provided Bx uh, Ax is false and all. if antecedent is false. Uh, the conditional is going to be automatically true even if uh, it does not exist also it does not make big difference and all. but once you say that some unicorns are wise and all this presupposes the existence of unicorns and all. unicorns so existence of unicorns in the actual world so this does not require uh, we do not have any commitment that you know unicorns actually exist in the world you know but yet you can talk about this particular kind of formulas but once you talk about this particular kind of formula this presupposes some kind of existence so that means unicorns have to actually exist in the world and all so so this is another interesting issue which is which we which we talk about it in the next few classes this this again is a problem which is raised by aristotle the problem is called as existential kind of fallacy suppose this is considered to be existential fallacy in the modern logic uh, but Aristotle has taken into consideration that uh, uh, from A proposition this is considered to be an A proposition that is all unicorns are wise uh, from that if you, you can in, you can still infer uh, whether or not you can infer some unicorns are wise or not. So this is if you infer in this way it is called as existential fallacy. Um, what what is the problem here is is that the problem here is is that we are importing the existence in the conclusion which is not there in the premises for example if you say all unicorns survive that doesn't presuppose any existence of unicorns but once you talk about some unicorns are intelligent or wise it presupposes that unicorns are unicorns actually exist in the world so we'll talk about this problem of existential import uh, at the end as a limitation of uh, uh, the uh, first order logic so the quantification logic so now let us talk about what we mean by the scope of the quantifier so you are just uh, trying to talk about uh, the basics of predicate logic still we are in the, uh, in the part of syntax itself so, so what do you mean by scope of a quantifier suppose if you say for all x phi uh, is considered to be a sub formula of uh, phi that means uh, that psi consists of some kind of sub formula uh, phi then psi is called the scope of a particular occurrence of a quantifier that is for all x in a particular kind of sub formula phi the same applies to the occurrences of uh, uh, the quantifier there exists some x in so whatever is within the scope of this quantifier is usually considered as the scope of the quantifier whatever falls outside the scope uh, is not considered to be bound so now we can talk about depending upon the scope of the quantifier to, to what extent this quantifier operates in a given formula we can talk about whether a given uh, variable is free or a given variable is considered to be bound so uh, there are only two things which exist here so an occurrence of an individual variable is considered to be bound if and only if it is within the scope of the quantification expression that contains the individual occurrences of the individual variables so whereas an occurrence of a variable is considered to be free if and only if it is not considered to be bound which is not in the scope of the quantifier is considered to be a not bound that means it is a free variable. 
so it is like uh, something which is uh, in the room is considered to be bound uh, for example a, a professor is teaching a class uh, whatever whosoever is in the class are bounded by uh, that particular kind of uh, instructions or teaching etc and all but those whosoever is walking outside etc and all they are not uh, uh, they do not have to be uh, they do not have to follow the instruction of a teacher and all so they are not bound by the particular kind of instructor who is teaching in that particular kind of classroom. So now let us consider some examples with which you can say which variable is considered to be bound and which variable is considered to be free. Suppose in the formula that, that is shown in this slide for all x uh, fx and cy implies there exists some y zy and hx or mz. So in this particular kind of formula uh, now there are various occurrences of this variables you know. what are these variables x y z are considered to be the variables that means if you can replace with any constants etc and all it will uh, you can replace these variables with some kind of constants these constants are considered to be some of the things which, uh, which are uh, some kind of objects in the domain it can be people it can be anyone uh, it can be a cross or it can be anything. So now in this particular kind of formula uh, so x y uh, and z these are, these are the variables that exist uh, uh, in this particular kind of formula and uh, it occurs in various uh, places and all. So now the first y and z are considered to be free for example if you take into consideration if you read it from left to right and all in this particular kind of formula. So this whole formula is uh, uh, whole formula is within the scope of for all x so that means fx is considered to be uh, uh, the formula fx is are obviously bounded by this quantifier x but whereas cy in the formula cy y is considered to be a variable which is not bounded in only x is bounded in that particular kind of formula the first sub formula so now wherever x occurs here that is obviously it will be uh, bounded and all uh, for example in the second formula there exists some y z y and h x r m z the first occurrences that means y uh, y in the first occurrence means it occurs in f x and c y that is considered to be free whereas the same occurrence of y in the second sub formula that is there exists some y z y and h x r m z so z y in the formula z y it is bounded by the, the quantifier there exists some y. So in the first occurrence y and z is considered to be free and of course the rest of the individual variables are considered to be bound. So whatever is within the scope of the quantifier is the one which we are trying to talk about. Let us take another example there exists some y g x y and f a in this particular kind of formula uh, y is considered to be bound as both occurrences are considered to be bound. So x is free uh, uh, because it is not in the scope of the x quantifier x quantifier is for all x we have only there exists some y however the term uh, a which is a considered to be constant uh, which is neither bound nor free so such kind of terms are called as uh, it is it is not considered to be a variable at all. So depending upon uh, the scope of uh, this particular kind of quantifier we can talk about uh, whether or not a given variable that is x y z etc are considered to be free or uh, sometimes it may be considered to be bound. And sometimes the occurrences of that variable in that particular formula can be bound and the same occurrence of that particular kind of formula y can be bound as well. So now let us consider another example so that we can understand the scope of this quantifier to what extent this particular kind of quantifier operates in that particular kind of formula. The formula is, is read like this in this case. It, it doesn't there doesn't exist x and there exists some y this formula is going to hold what is the formula for all z there exists some w such that a z w z and w are related in some way 
implies a y z and y z are also related in some way and a x y we are not talking about what how this x and y are related to each other it may be greater than it may be less than etc or x is the father of y or x is the brother of y or anything some kind of predicate a. So now in this one suppose if you look into the innermost quantifier so that is there exists some w and the scope of that one is the next immediate kind of formula that exists after that that is a z w so that is the scope of that particular kind of formula beyond that it won't operate on so there is another term which follows after that one that is a y z it won't operate on that particular kind of thing now if you consider the innermost quantifier for all z and that is going to operate on the scope of that one is whatever is there in the brackets that is there exists some w a z w implies a y z so we are not trying to talk about which one which variable is considered to be bound which variable is considered to be free and all so we want to talk about that particular kind of thing with respect to this universal quantifier for all z no no for all z there exists some w a z w implies a y z in that w is no z is considered to be no, no everything is considered to be bounded and all because there is no term which is considered to be free. So now with respect to the next quantifier then that is there exists some y the entire thing is considered to be within the scope of that particular kind of formula whatever follows after that particular kind of thing is within the scope of that quantifier and then with respect to there exists some x the entire formula is going to be within the scope of that particular kind of formula. So we have, we have what we have done so far is, is that we understood what we mean by a scope to what extent the quantifier operates and based on that uh, once it operates in all to uh, which for which variable is considered to be free which variable is considered to be bound is the one which we have seen it has its own significance especially when you are trying to talk about uh, some of the uh, important inferences in predicate logic some of the important uh, decision procedure methods that we will be using where we will we will need information about uh, which formula is considered to be free etc which formula is considered to be bounded and all so we will make use of it in uh, those decision procedure methods where we can check the validity of a given formula or we can talk about when two sentences are considered to be satisfiable etc so now uh, so far we talked about what we mean by quantifier and then what is the scope of a quantifier and then what you mean by a bound and free variable etc so now uh, let us talk about what we mean by a proper sentence in predicate logic in propositional logic we said that a sentence is considered to be uh, usually sentences means declarative sentences anything which can be spoken as either true or false usually considered as declarative sentence so for example if you if you if you are referring to sentences like shut the door or open the door etc and all the sentence can neither be true nor false and all. so in the same way if you are talking about some questions etc what is your name etc and all the sentence can be neither true nor false and all. so in the same way uh, what we mean by a sentence uh, a complete sentence uh, in predicate logic is the one which we uh, we should be interested to know a sentence is a formula in uh, your language the language of predicate logic which lacks free variables so your formula is so constituted in such a way that there is no free variable and that particular kind of formula is considered to be a proper sentence in predicate logic for example if you take into consideration for all x a y this is not considered to be a sentence because you have a free variable y suppose if you had said that for all x a x then it is considered to be would have been considered as a sentence but here the, uh, the existence of free variable will make it is not a proper sentence in uh, your predicate logic so why we are talking about whether or not is a particular sentence etc and all uh, just like in the case of propositional logic only sentences can be a statement can be true or false and all you can talk about truth or falsities false of a particular kind of sentence uh, in the same way for example if you take into consideration for all x ax and there exists some x bx is considered to be a sentence because there is no free variable 
that exist in this one because uh, a x is bounded by this quantifier for all x and uh, b x is already bounded by this uh, existential quantifier there exists some x and the entire thing is bounded uh, which, is, which is within the scope of the universal quantifier. So there is no free variable which exists in this second formula so that is why it is also called as a sentence. So let us consider the third one a x and there exists some x b x b x is bounded by this particular kind of uh, existential quantifier there exists some x so x is not free the occurrence of x in that particular kind of formula is not free it is x is bound in that particular kind of occurrence and x occurs x also occurs in the first uh, term that is a x so in that occurrence of x in that occurrence a x x is considered to be free so whenever you have a free variable that is not considered to be a sentence as the occurrence of that particular kind of formula is considered to be free in the same way for all x for all y a y y where y is considered to be free so it is not considered to be a proper sentence and of course bx is anyway in that particular kind of formula bx is obviously considered to be free I mean the variable x in the second term is considered to be free. So now what we mean by complete and incomplete sentences in the predicate logic and what it signifies in particular just like in the case of propositional logic only statements can be uh, only declarative sentences are the ones which we are going to take into consideration all the other sentences uh, which where you cannot draw a clear line uh, between the, let us say mortal and non mortal etc and all we do not take those sentences into consideration. So it sets some kind of limitations which we talk about it at the end of this course. So now what we mean by complete and incomplete sentences in predicate logic the expressions that is the formulas which are represented in terms of formulas are said to be complete if they contain no free variables that means everything is bounded by uh, within the scope of the quantifiers and they are the variables that exist within the scope of the quantifier are also considered to be bounded and you do not find any free variables then that particular kind of sentence is considered to be a complete sentence and they are incomplete if they do not contain if they do contain some kind of free variables in all. So we have seen some examples earlier so now one of the important consequence of this particular kind of division that complete sentence and incomplete sentence is this that complete sentences are considered to be fully meaningful that means that they can we can talk about whether or not they are tautologies in all. And they therefore have some kind of truth value that is true or false. Incomplete fragments by contrast are not meaningful, you can only talk about satisfaction. Under some interpretations, that formula is going to be true, and some interpretation is going to be false. And they therefore are incapable of having truth value. You cannot clearly say that it is a tautology, or you cannot say that it is a contradiction it is just like some kind of contingent kind of statement it can be true it may be false so this is the one of the important significance of demarcating between complete and incomplete sentences in predicate logic a formula which consists of no free variable is considered to be a complete sentence in the sense of predicate logic do not take it into consideration in, the, in terms of English language but you are taking it in the context of taking this in the context of predicate logic so that means here the important message is that the formulas in any formula that you are going to take into consideration that constitutes a complete sentence provided if it has no variables if it has variables free variables then it is not considered to be a complete sentence it is usually called as incomplete sentence let us consider some examples with which you can understand this idea in a better way there exists some x x where x is considered to be happy for example if you write there exists some x h x so that particular kind of sentence is considered to be a complete sentence because there is no free variable here in the same way there exists some x such that that x is happy and x is bold so that is what is both x the occurrence of x in this particular kind of formula is bounded so there are no free variables that is the reason why it is called as a complete sentence in the same way the third sentence for all y there exists some x e x y e is considered to be some kind of predicate uh, 
uh, and it can be uh, we can talk about any such kind of predicate uh, in a different in, in within in the context of a domain and uh, this formula is read in this way there exists some z not e z x. So all the variables that exist in this particular kind of formula are bounded by either universal quantifier or the existential quantifier so that is why there are no free variables uh, so there are no free variables in this particular kind of thing so that is why it is considered as a sentence whereas incomplete sentences are like this there exists some y such that y runs and y is old suppose if you represent it in this way there exists some x and rx and ovi the second occurrence of this variable y so only one once it occurs and all y in the second uh, in the second term that is ovi is free so wherever you find a free variable then it is not called as a complete sentence in the context of predicate logic so hx and rx both uh, occurrences of x are considered to be free because not bounded by any quantifier and all so since it is uh, the occurrences of x uh, in this particular kind of formula uh, going to be free so it is considered as an incomplete sentence in the same way px implies for all x px the first occurrence of x uh, is is free is not bounded by any quantifier etc and all so that's why it is called as an incomplete sentence so incomplete sentences uh, you can only talk about satisfiability and all whereas complete sentences you can talk about tautology or you can even definitely say that it is it is false or it is definitely you can say that it is true that is what we are interested in either we are interested in knowing that the particular kind of formula is true under all interpretations that is a tautology or it is for it is false in all interpretations and all that is a contradiction so so far we have discussed about uh, what we mean by a quantifier and then the scope of a quantifier and when we uh, we also said that when a given formula is free uh, when a given formula is bound etc and then we also talked about what we mean by a complete sentence and incomplete sentence in the context of predicate logic this we are building up our uh, things so now uh, just like in the case of uh, propositional logic uh, where you have discuss, we discussed in greater detail that uh, whatever way you combine will not constitute a well formed formula and all and we need to know have some kind of rules for judging whether whether or not a given formula uh, is considered to be a well formed formula so in the predicate logic which is usually considered as an extension of pre propositional logic so most of the rules of uh, propositional logic will apply here also except that there is an ad another additional rule that is the rule with respect to the quantifiers so now uh, what what you mean by saying that a given well formed form a given formula is considered to be a well formed formula in in the first order logic or the predicate logic so now uh, every atomic uh, formula that is uh, uh, p q r etc and all they are all considered to be uh, a well formed formula you just write like then it is considered to be a well formed formula if some x is considered to be a well formed formula not x is also considered to be a well formed formula and if circle is considered to be binary operator the binary operators are uh, there are four in number like uh, r and implies and if and only if if a and b are uh, considered to be formulas then a circle b where circle is represented as r and implies if and only if is also considered to be well formed form it, is, it doesn't tell us much uh, except that is this is going to be useful uh, when you are feeding some kind of information in the machine in particular this is the machine uh, should know how uh, which one is called as a syntactically correct kind of formula which one is syntactically incorrect formula this happens in the case of uh, uh, programming language as well while you are writing a program if there is any syntax syntactical error it will clearly show that uh, there is error in your uh, in our program and the same way uh, these are the things which are important in the context of uh, machines in particular so uh, the fourth rule is is that fourth rule is the one the only thing which is new here in the case of predicate logic if a is considered to be a, a formula then x is a variable uh, in that particular kind of formula a that means a x etc then for all x a x is also considered to be a well formed formula in the same way there exists some x a x is also considered to be a well formed formula 
whereas A x there exists some x is not considered to be well formula this, this just tells us how these formulas how various strings are combined and forms some kind of well formed formula so nothing is does not tell, tell us anything extra you know. so now anything uh, the fifth rule is uh, like uh, formality and all so that it says that all formulas generated by the finite number of applications of the above rules is automatically it will be treated as a kind of well formed formula this is talking about all the formulas that uh, you have to judiciously use the above formulas and all so it does not talk about anything new one. For example, if we say just p x and all, it is, let us say it represented by some predicate x. Uh, let us say human uh, Socrates is mortal. For example, p is considered to be predicate. That is, mortality is attributed to some kind of x. That is, x is considered to be some kind of Socrates or Plato, etc. So that is considered to be a well-formed formula. There exists some x, q, x, c, etc. They are all considered to be well-formed formulas. So just like in the case of uh, uh, prepositional logic suppose if uh, the parenthesis is not given then uh, we need to follow our own uh, conventions uh, so there is an order of precedence uh, which is used uh, widely in most of the textbooks so uh, the order of precedence is slightly different in case of uh, predicate logic when compared to the prepositional logic so the first reference is usually given to the universal quantifies so we have to put brackets uh, whenever you come across this particular kinds of uh, symbols for all y there exists some y bind most tightly and then followed by that rest of the things are same as the case of uh, prepositional logic negation uh, and r implies and double implies for example if you take into consideration this particular kind of example for all x p x implies there exists some y there exists some z q y z and there does not exist some x r x so there are no brackets nothing is given here so now in that context the first preference in this one you have to look for the universal quantifier so the universal quantifier occurs in the first uh, uh, string first formula sub formula that is for all x p x that is why we had put brackets there so now that is taken care of now we need to come to uh, existential quantifier that is the one which is needs to be preferred so now whatever follows after there exists some y you have to put bracket so that is what is happened here in the second stage and then again there is another existential operator which exists in the inner submost formula and all so that is there exists some z etc so where that is where you have to put brackets and then another one which exists inside so the innermost uh, 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 you have to note that the inner occurrence of x is bound to the innermost existential quantifier not by the other external kind of quantifier so that is the reason why we had put uh, there exists some x r x bracket there and the whole thing there exists some z and the whole thing is in the brackets now the, the what you get it uh, from this particular kind of formula is is that the first preference is given to universal quantifier followed by that uh, existential quantifier and you need to operate uh, with all the existential quantifier once it gets over then you move to negation and you put brackets there and then followed by that as usual in the case of proposition logic you follow and r etc in most of the good textbooks usually this uh, uh, parenthesis is already given but in some textbooks suppose if it is not given to you then we need to follow our own, our own uh, in this convention that you know first you need to take into consideration universal quantifier existential quantifier and followed by this particular kind of rules this is more or less similar to that of uh, propositional logic except that we have uh, two more operators they are for all y and there exists some y uh, universal and existential quantifier so we will talk about uh, so what do you mean by saying that a given formula in the predicate logic is considered to be a ground formula or it is when it is considered to be a closed kind of formula a formula f is considered to be ground if it does not contain any variables uh, so like you know usually you refer it as uh, constants etc and all a b c etc and all these things are uh, they are not considered to be variables and all they are referring to fixed individual in the domain so they are they do not contain any variable that formula is called as a ground variable rc rb etc all these things 
is closed formulas or those formulas if it does not contain free variables so those things which does not have some kind of free variables uh, means every all the formulas all the variables that exist in the given formula are considered to be bound then these are considered to be uh, free variables sorry the closed formulas that means you do not have any free variables which exist in that particular kind of formula. So let us talk about some examples of this ground and closed formulas and then we will close this particular kind of lecture. So these things are important later so we will make use of these things a little bit later. So for example if you say that some book that you are trying to read so that name of this book is something like Hamlet or something like and if you want to represent it as this thing so this is simply represented as B H and all the book Hamlet is boring for you so this is considered to be a ground formula it does not consist of any variable at all suppose if you are represented in this thing boring and some kind of X uh, and you represent it in this way there exists some X such that that particular kind of book is called as boring that particular kind of thing can be any other thing it can be Ramayana, Mahabharata or Hamlet or any other book and all. So X is considered to be variable here but here is a fixed kind of thing so it is in that sense this particular kind of thing is called as a ground formula it has no variables at all. So now this is considered to be ground form. So now suppose if you represent some other sentence like uh, where uh, there are variables here in this particular kind of formula usually you will see it here x x and all here x is considered to be a variable. So now here x is not free so now this particular kind of formula a formula which does not consist of free variables is considered to be a closed formula so this is considered to be a closed formula uh, there are some other kind of formulas which are considered to be neither closed nor ground kind of formulas so for example if you say this particular kind of thing r x b y x so b is a predicate and then this y x x are variables and then r is uh, some kind of uh, x is having some kind of property r so now in this one uh, there are two occurrences of x here and here so this is bounded by this particular kind of uh, quantifier x for all x so that is why x is not free here but what about y here y is considered to be free so it is in that sense whenever you have some kind of free variables which exist in a given formula so this is not considered to be a closed formula closed formula it is not the case that it is a closed formula so now is it is it considered as a ground formula that means a ground formula is a one which does not consist of any variables but you have variables here x y etc and all so in that sense it is not even called as a ground formula also. so now usually what we would be interested in is this particular kind of formulas and all so mostly these formulas can be uh, you can discuss about it as a uh, tautologies etc and all you can uh, talk about whether or not these formulas are true or false so in the next class what we will be doing uh, is we will be discussing about uh, some of the substitution instances of it and then we will also talk about uh, uh, so every formula will come up with some kind of uh, 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 some kind of uh, diagram tree diagram a unique kind of tree diagram uh, with which you can read the particular uh, formula and all. so what we have discussed in this class is simply is that we discussed about uh, what we mean by a quantifier uh, uh, and then we introduced two quantifiers for all x there exists some x 
uh, if you do not have this particular kind of quantifies things will be very difficult because you will be keep on writing it uh, recursively n number of times and all without even coming to know what it, it says. So we need this universal quantifies and existential quantifies uh, and then we discussed about uh, uh, the relationship between universal and existential quantifier and then we discussed about uh, when f a given formula is uh, is within the scope of the quantifier and based on that we can judge whether a given formula is a given variable in that formula is free or bound etc and then based on whether or not you have free variables and variables etc and all then we discussed about what we mean by grounded and closed formulas and all then we said that closed formulas here are of some kind of interest to us because we can discuss many interesting things about uh, interesting things about uh, uh, satisfiability, tautology, validity, etc., with respect to the closed formulas. So, in the next class, we will continue with uh, uh, the syntax only. So we will finish with the syntax and then we will move on to semantics and then we discuss about some of the important decision procedure methods which exist in the predicate logic. They are uh, first we start with the uh, semantic tableaux method, that is the one which we have discussed in the, uh, in the case of propositional logic. And then we move on to one of the important proof procedure method that is a natural deduction method and then as usual in the case of proposition logic we use resolution refutation method. So we will be talking about the same thing a little bit in the next few classes.